Like many iconic villains, Mr. Sinister's journey began with tragedy. After the devastating loss of his beloved wife and their stillborn child, Nathaniel Essex found himself consumed by grief and an insatiable desire to escape the pain that plagued his soul. Desperate for a way out, he turned to the powerful and malevolent mutant Apocalypse. This eternal mutant granted Essex's wish, but at a horrifying cost, stripping him of his human emotions. Apocalypse transformed Nathaniel Essex into Mr. Sinister. Freed from the shackles of his own humanity, Sinister became a mutant driven solely by an insatiable hunger for greatness and knowledge. And that's how Essex, a man, was turned into Mr. Sinister, a mutant. And this was also the beginning of his uber cool superpowers. Being a scientific genius and an expert geneticist, he began to incorporate the DNA of other mutants into his own, continually changing his internal biology and anatomy. In fact, Sinister had this awesome connection with Kraven the Hunter, one of Spider-Man's major villains, which is also something we will explore today. Sounds about perfect, given that the trailer for Kraven is out. In this video, we will explore everything there is to explore about Sinister's anatomy, from his powers and abilities to his muscles, tissues, and brain. There's something for everyone. Wait, that's not the correct phrase. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Who is Mr. Sinister? What does he look like? Nathaniel Essex was born in 19th century Victorian England. Even as a boy, he was fascinated with people following preordained paths in their everyday lives, and this led him to an obsession with finding the course of things, becoming one of the most intelligent people of his time. He met his wife Rebecca Milbury, and the two had a child who died at the age of four due to birth defects, and this threw Essex down the path of madness. He was the first to discover the possibility of the mutant gene, and called it the Essex Factor, and believed that mutants were the next evolutionary stage of humanity. To prove his point to the world, he stitched together parts of humans and animals to create Frankenstein's monster-like being, but was called an abomination by the scientific community. In fact, Sinister even exhumed his dead child and put him in a preservation tank, only to be found by his wife. This was when he met Apocalypse, a proof of everything Essex believed in. But the man had become a lost cause. His wife was about to die in the birthing bed because of the premature birth of their second child. And although he promised her that he would save her, all she said to him was that he had become utterly and contemptibly sinister. So her last word to him was sinister, and it clearly left a lasting impression on him. After two dead children and one dead wife, Nathaniel Essex lost all reason to live as a human and allowed Apocalypse to use celestial technology that drained him of all humanity and notions of human morality. Well, at least whatever remained of it in him. Assuming the identity of Mr. Sinister, a man reborn with superpowers bestowed by Apocalypse. He now radiated evil and power from his very persona. His body is covered in dark blue metal wrappings and armor, with the exception of his face. Adding to his sinister charm are the purple boots, a broad red belt, and the classic quadratic blood red gem on his forehead. Apart from this, he also wears a black cloak with a red interior. But, of course, these nuances change from artist to artist. However, a few alternate versions of Mr. Sinister, such as the Ultimate X-Men series, deviate a lot. Here, he is shown as a heavily tattooed thug and a former Oscorp scientist. Mr. Sinister has super dense tissue and muscles. Nathaniel Essex's genetic makeup has been extensively modified through the incorporation of mutant DNA. Undergoing the initial transformation by the mutant apocalypse, Essex found that he was not entirely satisfied with the powers he received. Why just have 10 powers when one can have 10,000? So he continued to use his nerdy mind to refine and enhance his genetic capabilities over the years through various self-experiments. One significant addition to Mr. Sinister's genome is the mutant gene of Thunderbird, aka John Proudstar. Now, this guy possessed a remarkable set of physical attributes that surpassed those of an average human being. For instance, his muscles were thrice denser than an average human's, and his body produced extremely low levels of fatigue toxins, both of which allowed him to exert his full potential for several hours before beginning to tire and retire. Naturally, by incorporating Thunderbird's genes, Mr. Sinister also gains superhuman strength, surpassing normal human limits by a substantial margin. His strength has been seen when he effortlessly overpowers Sabretooth using only his hand. Hell, he even choked the poor mutant. Furthermore, Mr. Sinister's genetic modifications have given him an enhanced level of durability. And because his muscular and tissue composition is significantly hardier than that of an ordinary individual, he can withstand gunshots, physical damage, shocks, and energy-based attacks. Additionally, his durability can be further augmented through his inherent regeneration ability, telekinetic powers, and the utilization of force fields. Mr. Sinister can control every molecule of his body. The comic Gambit Volume 3 Issue 14 gave Mr. Sinister a pretty awesome ability called Endopathy, 
which he can use to practically control each molecule in his body. Nathaniel Essex had already met a couple of time-traveling mutants in the form of Jean Grey and Scott Summers just after he became Mr. Sinister. However, in the year 1891, he had a brush with two more of them. Gambit and a shape-shifting mutant called Courier were searching for Mr. Sinister to prevent the Thieves' Guild from meeting Sinister because they wanted to learn more about Apocalypse and his whereabouts, and such a meeting could not bear good results for anyone. To give you a context, the Thieves' Guild was a highly dangerous criminal organization, and its de facto leader was Kandra, who was basically a rare immortal mutant or an eternal. Courier, the shapeshifter, disguised himself as a woman and infiltrated a clinic that Sinister ran, where he served as an obstetrician named Nathan Milbury. But Sinister, being the smart guy that he was, took no time to deduce that this female patient was, in fact, a mutant. He captured Courier, which forced Gambit to strike a deal with Sinister. According to this deal, Sinister would help Gambit with information about Apocalypse, and Sinister could use Courier's genome to study his shape-shifting abilities. Later, Sinister helped Gambit fight and stop Kandra, but not before Sinister incorporated the shape-shifting mutant's abilities into his own. After this, Sinister possessed the power to control each molecule of his body. He became what some may call a biomolecular metamorph, and his ability to deviate and manipulate his genetic structure resembled that of Apocalypse himself. Albeit Sinister's ability was a bit weaker than that of Apocalypse. But wait, he can do much more because of Courier's gift. Does he have shape-shifting ability? Apart from Gambit Volume 3, Issue 14, Sinister has displayed his exceptional shape-shifting abilities in other comics such as X-Men Volume 2, Issues 22 and 23. Now, Sinister is primarily a guy who operates from the shadows and spends most of his time manipulating people instead of engaging in real physical combat. So, it's quite evident that he needs to have powers that can help him manipulate people. Yes, being powerful and strong is very intimidating, but it isn't as good as changing form to influence people. He could become Aunt May or MJ to deceive Spider-Man. You know what I mean, right? And he got all this from Courier. As an extremely powerful metamorph, Sinister could become almost anyone or anything. I mean, this guy could even turn into semi-liquid or become as hard as the strongest of armor. So by changing the molecular structure and integrity of his sails, he could transform his body parts into weapons and become just about anyone. Interestingly, he could even transform into animals and use their natural abilities like flight, speed, etc. Now, shape-shifting mutants are synonymous with Mystique, but she had her limitations. She could not become too big or too small, nor could she turn into animals or birds, but Sinister had no such limitation. Sinister can regenerate from a single cell. Yes, a single cell. Mr. Sinister possesses the regenerative healing factor, but the Ultra Pro Max version of it. It allows him to swiftly and efficiently regenerate damaged or destroyed tissue. This remarkable power far surpasses the natural healing capabilities of an ordinary human, and maybe even the likes of Deadpool and Wolverine, but there's been no proof. Sinister's regenerative abilities enable him to fully heal from injuries that result in extensive tissue damage or loss including multiple puncture wound, gunshot wound, broken bones, slashes, and severe burns. And he gets spick and span, back on the streets within a remarkably short span of time. Clearly, his regenerative healing factor is an extension of the cellular control he acquired from Courier. This heightened healing factor is so potent that it renders his brain and other internal organs unnecessary for his survival. In fact, he can typically sustain gruesome injuries like being blasted in half or sustaining holes blown through the center of his head. And, of course, he has regenerated entirely from a single cell. So this means that you cannot really incapacitate this guy in battle because he always returns to his full health. So if you want to kill him, you have to destroy each and every cell of his body. And even that may not be enough, but we will talk about it in a later entry. He can create force fields to defend himself or others. So, Mr. Sinister can't just be defeated if you throw him off a bridge or shoot a bullet into his eyes. There's just Cyclops' optic blast that can actually hurt him, but he has a hack around that as well. Here come the powerful force fields that can stop even Cyclops from hurting him. The optic blasts have little to no effect on the force field that Sinister casts, and he can cast it to either protect himself or anyone else he wants to protect. So, they come in all shapes and sizes. We get to see this ability in at least two comics including Hunt for Wolverine, Adamantium Agenda No. 2, and X-Factor Issue 39. Does he have the ability to teleport himself and others? In addition to his expertise in genetics, Mr. Sinister has exhibited remarkable skills as an engineer and inventor. Throughout his extensive scientific endeavors, Sinister has successfully reverse-engineered advanced celestial technology obtained from Apocalypse's base while continually advancing his own technological creation. His remarkable scientific progress has spanned across various historical periods, including the Industrial Revolution and beyond. 
leading to the establishment of multiple hidden tesseract bases in different locations worldwide. Of particular note is Sinister's creation of a piece of technology, the specifics of which remain undisclosed, enabling him to teleport himself and others between his tesseract bases, as well as to any desired destination around the globe. However, it is worth mentioning that there has been some debate and disagreement among the X-Men comics regarding the nature of Mr. Sinister's teleportation ability. Certain members of the X-Men, such as Beast, have put forward the theory that Sinister's teleportation relies solely on technological means and may possess limitations as a result. According to this viewpoint, it may be plausible to disrupt Sinister's access to the teleportation devices, thus depriving him of one of the most valuable ability. Having said that, nothing has been proven, and Sinister might be achieving teleportation through the use of his own physical ability. He can carry out concussive blasts from his hands. During his gruesome interactions with the X-Men, Mr. Sinister frequently found himself engaged in combat against other super-powered good guys. In such confrontations, he frequently relies on his concussive blasts, which are basically a factor of his psionic abilities. By channeling sheer energy, Sinister can project powerful bolts from his fingers, which serve to swiftly incapacitate his adversaries while minimizing the risk of causing fatal harm. This non-lethal aspect of his concussive blast proves extremely valuable when his objective is to capture his opponents alive. Interestingly, most of the time, Sinister emits these energy blasts from his hands, but he retains the flexibility to discharge them from any part of his body as needed. Now, the special thing about these blasts is that they are comparable with Cyclops' optic blasts, which are basically pure concussive energy. He can reproduce, but there's something wrong. In the first half of the 19th century, a woman named Rebecca was married to Nathaniel Essex and gave birth to their son Adam in 1853. Tragically, Adam was born sick and passed away at the tender age of four. Two years later, Rebecca found herself increasingly distant from her husband, who had become consumed by his fascination with science, particularly human biology. Disturbed by Nathaniel's belief that science transcends morality, Rebecca grew increasingly troubled and sleepless. Driven by her concerns, Rebecca made the difficult decision to step into Nathaniel's laboratory to uncover the nature of his work. To her profound shock and absolute horror, she stumbled upon the lifeless body of their deceased son, Adam, who had been exhumed and subjected to her husband's experiments. The shocking discovery left Rebecca deeply disturbed. Rebecca summoned the courage to return to his laboratory and reverently laid Adam to rest once more providing him the dignity of a proper burial. Sadly, the immense stress and grief took a toll on Rebecca's health, leading to a premature birth that resulted in a stillborn baby. Tragically, Rebecca passed away shortly thereafter. Does Mr. Sinister possess telepathic abilities? Among the Earth's most formidable telepaths, Sinister effortlessly creeps into the minds of others, delving into their thoughts and effortlessly implanting his own. Notably, he possesses an innate resistance to the telepathic powers of others, but maybe he cannot shield himself from the likes of other Omega-level telepaths, such as our favorite wheelchair-bound mutant or the owner of the Phoenix Force, you know, the Professor and Jean. Anyway, Sinister can establish powerful mental links with individuals, thereby establishing a lasting connection with the chosen recipient. In certain instances, he has even demonstrated the ability to extract a person's consciousness from their physical body, a skillful manipulator of the mind. Sinister possesses the capacity to craft intricate telepathic illusions, leading individuals to experience events that have nothing to do with reality and everything to do with perception. Sinister's telepathic acumen extends to detecting the presence of other superhuman mutants as well as reading their minds within a range of at least 250 miles. He is also adept at erecting psychic shields, safeguarding both his own mind and the minds of others against psychic intrusions and assaults. So, it is not really difficult to imagine that he is great at shielding his own mind from external manipulation or harm, resisting attempts to control, read, or harm his mental faculty. But what makes him increasingly lethal is that he can induce targeted amnesia, causing the loss of specific memories in individuals or even groups of people. In addition to these formidable abilities, Sinister can project his consciousness into the astral plane, facilitating astral travel and enabling communication with other beings in this ethereal realm. Within the astral plane, he can use his powers to materialize ectoplasmic objects, shaping the environment to suit his desires. Now, it does sound a bit like DC's Phantom Zone, doesn't it? Sinister also possesses the capacity to temporarily paralyze foes through physical contact and can psionically nullify the superhuman abilities of mutants, establishing mental barriers that block their extraordinary powers. That's a lot of brain power. Does he have telekinesis? In addition to his telepathic prowess, Mr. Sinister has got telekinetic abilities that further translate into some awesome powers. With his telekinesis, Sinister can manipulate objects, living beings, and even energy. This enables him to levitate and control objects with remarkable precision and finesse, including himself. Sinister's telekinetic capabilities extend to the emission of concussive blasts from his hands. In addition to manipulating objects and projecting force fields, Sinister's telekinetic abilities enable him to achieve levitation 
station and engage in what can be likened to flight. Is he immortal? Mr. Sinister stopped aging when Apocalypse gave him superpowers. However, there are several other factors that add to his nigh invulnerability and immortality. Through his mastery of cloning technology and his exposure to celestial technology acquired from Apocalypse, Sinister can practically live forever. His ability to rapidly regenerate damaged or destroyed bodily tissue allows him to heal within moments ensuring his continued survival. Furthermore, Sinister has also had his fair share of conscience transfer. Through his scientific expertise, he has developed methods to transfer his consciousness, memories, and identity into other bodies, ensuring that even if his physical form is destroyed, he can come back. Sinister has also established Bar Sinister, an island base in the South Pacific. Populated with clones of himself, this sanctuary serves as a reservoir for his consciousness and a mean of securing his existence. While there may be instances where it is possible for Sinister to be killed, his unyielding powers, mental abilities, and his myriad of abilities allow him to overcome such obstacles. This guy really, really wants to live. The strange obsession with the gene pool of the most famous X-Men couple. So, Mr. Sinister has always wanted to create the most powerful mutant, and this obsession led him to mess with the DNAs of Scott Summers, aka Cyclops, and Jean Grey aka Phoenix. He finds these two mutants to have extraordinary genetic potential and is fascinated by the concept of them producing a child. In fact, he kind of manipulated the two X-Men to fall in love. Now that's the most sinister Cupid ever. Furthermore, he created Madeline Pryor, the clone of Jean Grey, whose only job was to serve as a surrogate for Scott's child, interestingly named Nathan. The child went on to become the time-traveling mutant named Cable, who was so powerful that he could practically extinguish stars with nothing but a thought. In more recent storylines, Sinister manipulated the DNA of Cable to create a powerful mutant messiah, which turned out to be the young female mutant, Hope Summers, whom Cable adopted. I think you should definitely check out our anatomy video of Cable. I'll leave a link in the description. He can cheat death by reincarnation in others' bodies. Mr. Sinister has devised an intricate method to cheat death through reincarnation in other people's bodies, or those of his clone. The centerpiece of this plan involves a virus created by Mr. Sinister himself, discreetly distributed among unwitting hosts. Now, this virus has like a complete copy of his own DNA, poised to overwrite the host's body upon the host's death. Through his potent telepathic abilities, Mr. Sinister can locate the new host and transfer his consciousness, effectively evading a final death. During the Messiah Complex storyline, Mr. Sinister met an accidental death at the hands of Rogue. As a result, the virus became activated, its chosen vessel being Claudine Renko, who would later assume the identity of Miss Sinister. Super hot, I tell you. Endowed with Mr. Sinister's powers, Miss Sinister possessed the ability to assume her original form if desired, although she opted to maintain her attractive appearance and don dominatrix-style attire. Unlike most individuals who plan their eventual passing by making legal arrangements or expressing final wishes to loved ones, Mr. Sinister's preparations are founded on the concept of another person inheriting his powers, plans, memories, and even his very essence. Sebastian Shaw and Juggernaut were among the candidates Mr. Sinister identified as potential vessels in the event of his own physical destruction. Mr. Sinister once created X-Raven, a clone of Kraven the Hunter. X-Raven was created as a clone of Kraven the Hunter by Mr. Sinister. The origin of X-Raven is revealed in the X-Men Spider-Man crossover storyline. The crossover brought together two greatest villains of both the X-Men and Spider-Man in the form of Sinister and Kraven, respectively. During a battle between the X-Men and Kraven the Hunter, Kraven managed to obtain DNA samples from several members of the X-Men, including Cyclops, Marvel Girl, Angel, Beast, and Iceman. He sold these samples to Mr. Sinister, who was particularly interested in acquiring Kraven's own DNA as well. Sinister also obtained a sample of the Carnage symbiote for experimentation. Using the collected DNA samples, Sinister combined the genetic material from all seven individuals, including Kraven, to create X-Raven. The goal was to produce a perfect mutant hunter with enhanced physical abilities and the powers of the original X-Men. Sinister took measures to suppress any sentience within the symbiote sample, ensuring that X-Raven would remain under his control and not the symbiotes. X-Raven was equipped with Kraven's iconic lion head costume and armed with two vibranium daggers, making the Splice clone a formidable adversary. After the events of the House of M storyline, where most mutants lost their powers, X-Raven was unleashed by Sinister on a mission to collect the remaining mutants' DNA. The X-Men, aided by Spider-Man, became aware of X-Raven's action when a former Murloc witnessed him brutally murdering another mutant with powers. The collective heroes confronted X-Raven, who proved to be a rather undefeatable opponent. 
However, it was the knowledge and experiences of Cyclops and Spider-Man with Sinister and Kraven, respectively, that played a crucial role in defeating X-Raven. Appealing to the remnants of X-Raven's personality, the heroes managed to persuade him that he shouldn't be merely a servant to Sinister. As a result, X-Raven broke free from Sinister's control. The outcome of the subsequent battle between X-Raven and Sinister remains unknown, leaving the possibility open for X-Raven's potential survival or eventual return. Marvelous Verdict I don't know about you, but I'm still reeling from all the mind-bending abilities and sinister powers this guy possesses, from his regenerative healing factor and immortality to his master of telepathy and telekinesis. Mr. Sinister is undoubtedly one of the most formidable and enigmatic villains in the Marvel Universe. And let's not forget about his uncanny cloning technology and the ability to cheat death through reincarnation. It's mind-blowing stuff. Just what puts the super in supervillain? Now, I want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on Mr. Sinister's incredible anatomy? Which of his powers do you find the most fascinating or terrifying? Share your opinions in the comments below. And let's geek out together!